deployment and security services. As a continuation of the preceding lesson, here we will discuss about the deployment and security services. Let's start with deployment services. Deployment services in Java EE allow the components and applications to be customized at the packaging and deployment time. A Java EE application consists of one or more Java EE modules which are made of various Java EE components and each component contains a deployment descriptor which is an XML file. This XML file describes how to assemble and deploy the application components. Deployment descriptors also contain many elements to customize the Java EE platform services, such as transactions and security. If any of the Java EE modules don't have an application deployment descriptor, then it can be deployed as a standalone Java EE module. Generally, a Java EE application consists of one or more Java Archive or JAR files along with zero or more resource archive or AR files which are packaged into an enterprise archive EAR file with .EAR extension. Let's look at the various modules in an application one by one. Let's start with Enterprise Java Beans modules. These modules contain class files for Enterprise Beans EJB deployment descriptor. EJB modules are packaged as JAR files with a .jar extension. Web modules contains JSP files, class files for servlets, GIF and HTML files. And a web deployment descriptor, web modules are packaged as JAR files with a .war or war extension, web archive. Resource adapter modules. It contains all Java interfaces, classes, native libraries and other documentation. Along with the resource adapter deployment descriptor. It also implements the connector architecture for a particular EIS resource adapter module and they're packaged as JAR files with a .ra extension resource adapter archive. Application client modules. These modules contain class files and an application client deployment descriptor. Application client modules are packaged as JAR files with a .jar extension. Next we move on to discuss about the security services. Security services. Java EE platform security services are designed to ensure that the resources are accessed only by the authorized users. Normally, the access control is obtained in two steps. They are authentication and authorization. Authentication. The purpose of authentication is to check the identity of a user. The user might be another program. Usually doing this by providing the username and password. The authentication can be carried using any of these ways, i.e., HTTP basic authentication, digest authentication, form-based authentication, and certificate authentication. Just providing username and password is the basic authentication. Digest authentication is the same as basic authentication, but here we will transmit the password in an encrypted form, which is much more secure than the simple base64 encoding used by basic authentication. In form-based authentication, the web container can provide an application-specific form for login. Finally, in certificate authentication, the client uses a public key certificate to establish its identity. Authorization When an authenticated user tries to access a resource, the system will verify whether the user is authorized or not based on the security policies defined in the application security policy. For example, in a company, the employee ID is managed by an administrator. The employee doesn't have access to change the ID. Similarly, a security policy was assigned to all the users, those having the authentication. Let's look at the Java EE component that provides these services, i.e. JAAS or JAAS, Java Authentication and Authorization Services. 
JAAS provides a framework and standard programming interface for authenticating users and for assigning privileges. It is based on the standard Pluggable Authentication Module, or PAM, framework and also supports user-based authorization. JAAS provides a flexible access control policy for user-based, group-based and role-based authorization. We will discuss more about this later in the course. Overview of Service Technologies in Java EE In this lesson, we will talk about the overview of the various service technologies in Java EE platform. The Java EE platform service technologies provide the capability for applications to access a wide range of services in a uniform manner. Here we will discuss about the technologies that provide access to databases, transactions, XML processing, naming, directory services, and enterprise information systems. Let's look at each technology one by one. Java Database Connectivity, API, JDBC API. The JDBC API provides database-independent connectivity between the Java EE platform and a wide range of particular data sources. JDBC technology allows an application component provider to make connections to a database server, sending and processing SQL statements on a database and retrieving the results from the database, etc. Interact with the Java EE server, JDBC provides the several APIs in Java EE packaging in addition to the use of the JDBC APIs defined in Java SE. The extension APIs provide row sets, connection naming via JNDI, connection pooling and distributed transaction support, etc. Java Transaction API and Service Java Transaction API, or JTA, allows applications to access the transactions which are independent of specific implementations. JTI specifies standard Java interfaces between a transaction manager and the members in a distributed transaction system, i.e. the transactional application, the Java EE server, etc. The Java Transaction Service, or JTS, specifies the implementation of a transaction manager that supports JTA and implements the Java mapping of the Object Management Group Object Transaction Service 1.1 specification. The JTS Transaction Manager provides the services and management functions required for transaction isolation, transactional resource management, and etc. Java Naming and Directory Interface the Java Naming and Directory Interface, or JNDI, API provides naming and directory functionality for applications. It provides methods for performing standard directory operations, such as providing names for the objects and searching the objects using the names. Here we use the names, for example, here we can use any key for identification. Using JNDI, an application can store and retrieve any type of named Java object. As we discussed earlier, the existing naming and directory services in use are LDAP, NDS, DNS and NIS. Java EE Connector Architecture the Java EE Connector Architecture is a standard API for connecting the Java EE platform to enterprise information systems, such as Enterprise Resource Planning, ERP, mainframes and database systems. It defines a set of scalable, secure and transactional mechanisms for integrating an EIS with a Java EE platform. It also defines the system contracts between Java EE compliant application servers and resource adapters. So an application developed using the Connector API is deployable on all Java EE platforms that have the resource adapter for the EIS used by the application. Java API for XML Processing Technology, JAXP. This technology supports the processing of XML documents using DOM, SACS and XSLT. 
Don't confuse this with these abbreviations. Just remember, we will discuss later in detail. JAXP enables applications to pass and transform XML documents independent of a particular XML processing implementation. We can also make our own application flexible by swapping between the XML processors, such as between high-performance or memory-conservative parsers, without changing anything in the application code. Let's move on to discuss about the communication technologies in Java EE platform.